Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to the CU Sports Network from wherever you may be in the world this evening. If you're accustomed to hearing the smooth sound of voice of Colin Shepherd, I do apologise. But I'm Liam Morgan from the men's soccer team, and I'll be your commentator for today's match. In the week that the weather has made a noticeable change here in Camwasville, as too have the Tigers. In a defiant win in the face of a poor start to their season last time out against Georgetown, CU showed shades of their NCCAA national championship winning side of last year. If they wish to retain their title, or even better it this winter, today's game against Shawnee State is necessary fuel to propel their semester. Coming off the back, back-to-back -back defeats against Lindsey Wilson and the University of Cumberland. A win for the Bears is imperative as well as they look for only their third victory over CU since the turn of the century. This has all the ingredients for a great night of football. It's the Camusel Tigers versus the Shawnee State Bears and it's live. As we see the teams walking out to the center circle. We'll get their lineups sorted out for you as soon as possible. Looks like Adam Preston has named an unchanged side from last time out with Christine Haugen go. Elvis Neil Kazawa at left back, Joao Lopes and James Feely, the centre half partnerships with Jamie Bird at right back. And I'll, I'll, we'll, go, we'll go through the Shortland State one first. 22, Kay Tomlinson in goal. Imran Mamran, Lars Vanderpol, number four. Thomas DeGraw, number seven. Eight, Marco Riva. Ten, Joao Toledo. 11, Mateus Caraga. Jonathan Oliveira, number 16. Kevin DeLang, number 17. Bruno Rivares. And, and Guillermo, Guillermo Caneja. And now for your Camusville Tigers for this evening. Keeping his place, Christian Hauger in goal. Nia Krizar at left back. Shoal Lopes at centre half. Nathan Schmidley, fresh off his goal against Georgetown, keeps his starting spot. Sebastiano Musi, our front. Your captain for today, Gustav Oskarsson. Number 12, in that camp position, Samuel Londono with his parents here to watch him. Jamie Bird at right back. Yuso Kajiva, number 16, in that central midfield. James Feely, number 19 at that left centre half position. And rounding off your Tigers for this evening, Diego Shayna. As we see the players shaking hands before we get underway here. I think we're going to see a lively start here under the lights at Finley Stadium. I think it'll be electric from the first minute with both teams needing the victory. As we see Campbellsville getting their huddle for the last minute preparation as do Shawnee State off camera. They'll look to motivate each other and act as a unit today here in this outing against the Bears.
Looks like Sebastiano Musu will be getting this underway shortly. Interestingly, it looks like Shortest they have two captains on the pitch. But nevertheless, we get underway. Campbellsville in the usual. 4 2 3 1. With James Feely left centre half, Jao Lopes right centre half, Diego Chano and Yusuke Kojima in the CDM positions. With Schmidley and Oscarson on the wings, Londono in the 10, Musu through the middle, and the fullbacks of Neo Kawaza. And Jamie Bird. And Nathan Spindley with a kick in that make to start things off as the ball goes out of play. Shawnee State looks to spread the play, but it's a loose ball. Oscarson chasing this down, looking to capitalise. Could be an early chance to press for Campbellsville as they force a throw in in front of the Shawnee State bench. Poorly played into midfield by James Feely as they spread the play. Alice Sherelle Lopes, Jamie Bird with time. As he goes back to his keeper, Christian Howe, with a cool and composed touch. Hopefully that sets the tone for his game this evening. Ball pinballing around in the air at the moment. Oh. Elvis Nick as well, <laughs> trying to be a bit too cheeky there. Trying to play it through the legs of his opposite number. But all it results in is a Campbellsville throw in. Strong play from Sebastian Marcy. He too has a nutmeg with a back heel. Chances for Campbellsville early on. Flashed across the face of goal. I think Musu wanted that just a little bit in front of his feet. But it was over hit by Gustav Oskarsson. As a Shawnee State right back. Looks to play long. And Christian Howe will take them every day of the week. Charlotte's your time to pick his head up. James Feely to put his feet with a man coming towards him. Coolly steps past his man and plays into his left back. Working council up the pitch. Else with a clip in behind. Into Musa, can he get it under? Oh, it's just evaded his touch. He knows that was a big chance. Ball recovered by Chano. Kojima, ball rolls. Is that an effort? Go! Oh. Off the upright of the American football bar. Just creeping over the bar. But the keeper was worried about that one. It's a lot of space over this far side for Shawnee State as they work it over to the Malaysian left back, Rahman. <laughs> Lovely clip in behind. As the right winger squares up his man, delivers into the box. Coolly down by Londono, chesting it down to the Brazilian Chena. Is he Brazilian? I think it's Portuguese actually, isn't it? Diego, I do apologise, mate. Jamie Bird with a bit of a rash tackle from behind there, swinging the ball, looking to go through his man to get it. And the referee deems that a foul. Special Moose, not letting his man Bruno Avarish take any time to play out with that ball. Opt to turn back, but Musu was right off him. James Feely with the whole pitch ahead of him with time. 
looking for a clip in behind to go to have got cut out by the Shawnee State right back. And it's sent back the following way. But the referee has given an offside. So we look at a replay of this Yuso Kojima strike. He definitely caught hold of it, caught his sweet. Just too much on it as it sails over the bar. Rama with a nutmeg as well. We've seen a lot of nutmegs in the first five minutes. And I think that means that we're going to have an exciting game. Philly, the clip into the left back. Oscarson battling, getting the better of his man. And the referee deems that a fair challenge. As we have another Camels for throwing for Neo Kazuara to take. Always clip long. James Feely getting very tight. It's played in behind. As Cavs will scamper back. Will it break for a Shawnee State player? James Feely had a chance to clear. It's a strong 50-50. It dropped to the feet of the Shawnee State player. He's very lucky at Camelsville. Managed to get the bodies back to evade the striker there. Chena recovering possession. Finding Schmidley. Will he slip in Musu here? Musu picks up the ball, right to right. Oscarson loading the box. Londono arriving as well. Musu squares up his man. Very strong challenge from the number 18, Bruno Ravarez there. Kojima searching ball towards the back stick. Coolly done by Oliveira. Just to see that ball run across his body and play it into a central midfielder. Shilney State now with the ball around the back. Cool, he done my river. Seemed comfortable with the ball at the feet on the back line. However, when a Sebastian Musso and Gustav, Gustav Oskarsson lurking, could be a press coming at any time. Surely a foul. And the referee does give the foul. Be the left footed Englishman, James Feely. To swing this ball in. Probably won't like me saying the fact that he's English. Was that it's from London? Floated in towards the head of Gustav Oskarsson. Keep it calm, punched. It's loose. Oskarsson pulls it across. And it's dealt with. And now Shorty State are on the counter attack. But they've just regrouped. And just regenerated in their shape. Oh, a loose ball nearly capitalised on there by Sebastiano Musu. He's always alert to that kind of thing. Shawnee State. Contempt to try and manipulate and play through this Camelsville set structure. As the ball's clipped over the top, and you see the first time today where we'll get to be privy to the raw pace of James Feely <laughs> as he sprints back and takes the ball away from any sort of danger. A little Travella ball out to Rahman, wide left. Attempts to cross, but blocked by Jamie Bird. And it'll be our first corner for Shawnee State. The, the refs moving the corner flag back. I think he's moved it to try and get a better angle of his kick, but I don't really know why he needs to do that. But it's 
Thomas De Graal with the ball into the box. It's dangerous, lurking back post. I think that's Diego Chano with a header away. Oscarson picks it up wide left and he's content with just clearing it. But it's only as far as number eight, Marco River, who whips it in and claimed by Christian Haig. It's been a fairly evening, evening, fairly even opening 10 minutes here at Finley Stadium. Be interesting to see who becomes the first team of a shot on target and will that shot on target lead to a goal. A ball round the corner, looking for Samuel Londono from the right foot of Sebastiano Musso, only results in a throw in. But Jamie Burr's alert to the run of Nathan Spidley. He's in behind, he's battling. Can he win anything out of this situation? No, it's cleared by Shawnee State. And Jamie Bird with a header and it'll be brought down by Yusaku Jima with a strong challenge. Chano looks for a dink over the top into Oscarson. And the keeper makes claim. <laughs> Jamie Bird ties the number 10 Toledo. It's done very well to win the ball back there. And a reverse ball. Kickstarts this counter-attack. Londono nearly finding Musu. First piece of play where we've seen the ability of the quick fire cameras will link up. Can turn it on at any second. James Feely screwing his man up in the corner. As he tried to beat the double team of Feely and Neo Kazawa. Had to drop it back into the right back. He swung the ball into the box and Schmidley hooks away clear. Schmidley done very well to block off that ball down the line there. He could have proved dangerous, but instead, Shawnee State have been forced home. Lovely switch from the number seven De Graaf, but it can't be brought under the grasp of that right winger. The referee indicating that, I don't think the, the ball did come on, it just went, Madonna went out, but a lot further up the pitch than we previously thought, or is he, is he giving a, is good a foul throw? I think he's giving a foul throw. Ball's falling to the edge of the box, to the grow, who takes a shot, bounces just in front of Hague, which can prove to be difficult on some occasions, but thankfully, with that freshly laid turf, it was more of a consistent bounce than we might have seen instead of last year's pitch. And he takes it, thankfully, into his grasp. <laughs> Feely looking long to the Okazawa. Oscarson recovers the possession after the header down to him. But it's, it's pinball in a bit at the moment. And a hook from Feely ends that sequence as Shawnee State will get a throw in close to the halfway line. The press for Musi proving to be effective as he nicks possession early. He's gone for a long range shot. I thought it had a chance. Again, off that American football post. Keeper seems to be scampering at one point. I had it covered eventually. Shawnee State trying to squeeze Camelswell back, box him in this corner. Jamie Burst plays it down the line, and Musi flicks it over. Oscarson just on the shoulder 
of his defender. And the linesman has signaled for an offside on that occasion. An early switch from Revaish out to the right back, and their linesman has seen it well. And that ball has crossed the line, so it will be a canvas will throw in. It's now for instance. Well, although Spasco Amusu is only five foot nine, his sheer presence and his strength cannot be undermined. He had the defender all over his back there and still managed to shield the ball. Although these these switch balls from the free kicks are coming off from Shawnee State, a little miss kick or a slight error could prove to be fatal. Just playing across your goal, it could lead to an interception. Now, you do not want Spasiano Musu bearing down on your defence. On this occasion, the ball is clipped over the top and Joao Lopes does well to cover as the ball is kicked into the crowd here at Finley Stadium. Roman with the throw in. It's a searching ball. That will run out for a goal kick. Shawnee State will make their first substitution of the evening. And that will be Nico Pontikis coming in to fill in that right back spot. Schmidley. Nutmeg! It's a wonderful tackle from Nico Pontikis. Nikos Pontikis needed it early on. And his first involvement in the game was cutting out that 2v1 situation with that slide tackle. That burn will be felt in the morning off this Astro. <laughs> Diego Chena with a possession recovery again with his head. But Camelswell can't quite grasp the ball and get it into their possession. Instead, it ends up with the Shawnee State keeper. Musu lays it off to Chena, tries a little reverse, but we're having a corner to Oscarson, but it isn't quite executed. Both teams looking to play quickly here. James Feely with time and space. Looks for a clip ball into Oscarson. Who looks for a crossfield ball, but nothing doing. Thomason with a high ball. Feely's done well to pick that out. Out of the lights and away for a throw in. Referee deemed that fair from that coming together between the player and Diego Shana as Campbellsville can settle in possession with Joe Lopez along that back line. Surely a foul and it's given. We're pushing it back on Sebastiano Musu. The referee's stopping the clock here. Just wants a word with the Brazilian centre half. So, Gams will have a free kick on the halfway line. 
Jamie Burr standing over it, looking as if he's looking to whip this one into the box from deep. Keeper's come for it and decided to punch. Headed out as far as Kojima. His miss kick will fall to Oscarson if he can keep this in. And possession squandered by the Campbellsville captain. Big switch out to this near left side for Shawnee State. Rumble on the overlap. Set off. <laughs> that too has floated harmlessly over for that effort. Game we're seeing in this first 20 minutes and an evenly matched game. How good about his feet. Feely takes the ball into his stride. Looks to play forward. A driven ball into the feet of Oscarson. He plays around the corner, but surely that's a foul. He's been taken out very late. And the Cowersville will be allowed to make their way up the pitch with that call. Feely looks for a big switch. To Schmidley. But like them five feet, it's gained Campbellsville. A lot of territory. Moves to it back to goal. Lays it off to Bird. He tries to get it out of his feet. Whips it into an area. And Londono being penalised for his high boot there. The Bears opting to play short. Joao Lopez not letting an inch of space up to the Bears striker. <laughs> Feely steps into midfield, tries the ball roll, but loses possession. However, Kojima with a tackle, will allow bodies to get back behind the ball. And a foul from Nathan Spidley. And that will be a dangerous area for a ball into the box from Thomas DeGraw. And the Shawnee State captain is not happy about that one. Grass standing over it with Menace. Whips it towards the far post. And Hauger claims. Looks to play long. And it's, I think it's hit his own player. And it did. As the linesman gives Shawnee State a throw in on the halfway line. The Grass with three men around him. Sets it off. To his right back. We're intercepted by Londono. Can he free up Musu? Musu. Forced wide. Looking for a cutback. Spidley's there. It's overly cute from the Brazilian centre half there. But they got away with it nonetheless. Flick on. It's into the Lang. Great save by Haug. And that will be 1 0 to Shawnee State away from home. A goal from Camargo there. The flick on took two players out of the game, allowed the shot 
to be taken. Great save from Haug, but parried into a dangerous area. And it was tucked away by the Bears number 11. Brilliant save, just parried it straight to the feet of the attacker and just over the head of the defender on the line. So Shawnee State have the breakthrough. After 24 minutes, they are 1 0 up at Finley Stadium. Let's see if and how. The Tigers can respond in the immediate future in this next five minutes. From Kojima, what results in a free kick being given? We've seen how dangerous Thomas de Graaf can be over these dead ball situations already this evening. So Cowgirls will need to be aware about giving away cheap free kicks. McGraw whips in, floated towards the back post. It's another great ball. It just needed a back post runner for someone maybe to get a shot on target or to pull it across the face of goal. But there was no runner at that back post. No one gambled on that ball. So that'll float harmlessly away for a Camelsville goal kick. And the ball is now at the left foot of James Feely. With space in front of him, drills it into Chano. But it's a loose ball. And it'll be picked up by Shawnee State. And if not for a poor touch, Campbellsville could have been under the cosh there. Mixara working the line. Musu flicked down to Londono. Turns on the half turns. Chief Smidley. It's going to be tight with the offside call. He's in behind. And the linesman has given the verdict of offside on that occasion on Nathan Smidley. Propping up on that left side. We've seen glimpses of it so far today. But I think Hamilton will get their success from the quick link up. As we saw Londono in a half turn there getting some joy, especially with the late run. It's been a lot of long balls, not a lot of uh, link up play on the deck. Whereas Shawnee State have had the most joy of that so far. Block from Oscarson. It leads to a troubling situation. And Londono will capitalise. It'll fall for Musa, who tries a weak foot shot. Nothing doing in the eyes of the referee. Bird making a run. Yusuke Kojima opts to chop back. Jamie Bird with his arms thrown up in the air. That ball should have gone out wide to him. Brilliant play out of a tight area from Camelsville. Now they're on the front foot. Jamie Bird. We're clipping behind. A put behind for a Camelsville corner. Over the far side. And the right back, Jamie Bird, will have an opportunity to whip this ball in. Let's hope for a good delivery here. 
So there are some tall players in that box for Campbellsville. All crowding around keeper. And specifically around that front post. Bird with flat ball in towards the back post. Just too close to the touchline for Oskarsson to head downwards and goalwards. Campbells will just regroup in their shape. And Rahman content of just letting that go out for a throw in. <laughs> Jamie Bird were pushing the back there. The crowd aren't happy about it, but it's a needless and Definite foul by the Englishman. But surely State have taken it quickly. And the the linesman's the linesman's flagging for something. But the game is the game is going on and it's I think he's it is a head injury. It's correct for the game to be stopped here. There is a trainer coming onto the pitch. He's holding the back of his head here, the number 17. And I think we'll rejoin the action after these messages here on the CU Sports Network. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Welcome back to the action between the Council Tigers and the Shawnee State Bears as Kevin DeLang has made it back to his feet after his head injury and will be allowed to rejoin proceedings. The referee just consulting the linesman here about how to restart the play. Um, it'll be a drop ball of some kind. Will he ask Calmersville to kick it back or will they be able to drop and play? With the Lang leaving the pitch for the moment, leave Shawnee State down to 10. So I think he's. Taking some fluids on board over that far side. Uh, it'll, it'll come back onto the pitch before we get back under. Oh no, it won't. The ref changed his mind. And Jamie Bird plays quickly. Kojima looks for a big switch. Just too long to find the target of Oscarson.
Little crit round the corner from the growl. Beautifully weighted. Nezoa done well not to be beaten there. Done very well. Cleared by Nezoa. But intercepted by that Shilney State back line who have dealt very well with the long balls in the first half hour of this game. As we see Oskarsson just pick up that central roll as Musu drifts out to the left hand side. As Shilney State will be forced all the way back to their keeper. Who is allowed to play out and the centre half will now play long. It's beautifully <laughs> picked out ball. Chano comes across, covers. The player is down on the floor, but they carry another less with dangerous attack. And Chano cuts it out. And the referee will stop the clock once more. As I think is a coming together or a clash of knees that has injured the Shawnee State defender. And, yeah, again, we'll rejoin the action when we continue on the CU Sports Network. I tell my son, I love you every single day. I love you. Now, my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Whilst we're gone, the referee was trying to ask Hamsel to kick the ball back to Shawnee State. But Coach Adam Preston raised the point that Council did have possession and has told his players to keep the ball. James Feely with time and space. Shifts to White to his centre half partner, Shrell Lopes, who looks forward. Plays into the feet of Musu, lays it off for Schmidley. Schmidley with back to goal, tries to find his fullback, but can't. Bird with a strong challenge. Londono clearly fouled in a dangerous position, but not given by the referee. And I could hear that all the way up here in the gantry. Feely with a loose ball into the midfield. Londono dishing out a receipt there. Again, the referee not giving her a foul. And Oscar with a clip ball. Into Peter Musu, takes it into his stride, shifts it onto his left. Brilliant defending from the Shawnee State player. Musu spins and another brilliant tackle by the Brazilian. The fans in attendance clearly not happy with that decision. They are demanding a penalty be given. Searching ball, back post, yes! <laughs> After scoring his first goal last week against Georgetown, Nathan Spidley gets his second in as many games. As the ball found its way through to the back post, as it wasn't dealt with off that corner. Spidley with a touch and finished through bodies, which miss sighted and misfooted the keeper. And the ball has ended up in the back of the net. And that is the reply cameras were after before the halftime break. As we see, the Vuvuzela's out. 
can have another look at this goal. Ball comes all the way over. The keeper's come for it and just got nowhere near it. Ash Bidley wheels away in celebration. Oh, his second Campbellsville goal. Jamie Bird with a large ball forward. It's come down with snow on it. But dealt with well by Oliveira. As Shawnee State looks to transition into attack very swiftly. But recovered by Campbellsville. Who hopefully will use that goal as momentum and kickstart their game. Ely looking for Oscarson with a long ball forward. And it's just evaded his head. So it's his second substitution for Shawnee State. Ifram Matumbo will enter proceedings. Alive to that ball was Christian Haug. Matumbo getting involved already. With a little shove in the back on Diego Chena. But it will not be moved that easily. Lopsh picks up the ball with time and space. A couple passes strong scared by the centre backs. Cowboys, we need to relish this ball, but instead they've gone long. And position is overturned. Recovered by Schmid with a lovely little flip round the corner. Musu using all his strength. Musu not happy with the decision. He wants a foul on the edge of that box. But the referee didn't want to give the foul. Feely, again with time and space, looks for that ball to Gustav Oskarsson. This time, finds his feet in behind. Cuts back inside. Delivers into the box. Oh, it's an important flick on by the Shawnee State defender. And Rahman prevents a corner. Musu was lurking behind the centre half there. If that ball would have made its way through, could have been a different scoreline. Jamie Bird looking to launch a long throw in into the box. It's found ahead of Oscarson. Nearly broke for Londono, but pokes away by Matumbo. Feely opts to hook it back into the box. It's towards Oscarson. Flicked backwards. It's Londono. It's it's in. Londono from Columbia to Campbellsville. His class shines through. And he makes the second goal. In the presence of his parents here today. Travelling over to his surprise. He has put Campbellsville 2-1 up before half time. And it, that, that's an interesting celebration, that one. Brought out a wheelbarrow. It's kind of tainted it a little bit, really. But nevertheless, Samuel Londono with another goal. And just three minutes apart since the first. We'll see the replay. It was a long searching ball from Feely. Flicked backwards by the 16. And a little early shot caught the keeper off guard. But that little poked volley by Londono, who is met with adoration for his fellow teammates. Surely the ref's going to give that one. No, he doesn't. So letting a lot go, this referee. Shano chasing his own kick. And gets the better of his man. It's a long ball claimed by Lopes. Schmidly leaps high. And Shano sweeps up. 
Jamie Bird plays down nine, but slightly misplaced and will be out of play. A little shove from the number 10 and Nathan Schmidley just knocking the ball out of the way and we'll see it out for a throw in. This is what can happen when referees let continuous fouls go. The game could break down. Hopefully we don't see that here, but we're feeling something brewing. Jamie Bird looking to beat his man. But instead it'll go out for a throw in. Cairns will recover the ball though. Londono brings it down. And frees up. Elvis on that far side. Bird looking for the first time. Ball just spins off his foot and away for a throw in. Shawnee State seem to have urgency to try and claw back to get on level terms as we go into the break in six minutes' time. An effort, a goal. Oh, it's what a save! Christian Haug wasn't expecting a shot. He's a bit far off his line, but he managed to scamper across, reach back, and prevent that ball from nestling in the far corner. The Grau will whip this one in once again. Hands on hips, ready to deliver. Shawnee State as well. They are crowding the keeper. Whipped in on top of the keeper. Back post. Ooh. And a corner has been given. It's come off a Camwisville player. Adam Preston not happy that that back post runner was allowed to be free. And we can see that effort again. Oh, brilliant save. It's a man, man free in that Camelsville box, as well as one hanging over the back. Delivered by DeGraw again. Flicked on it in the near post, but harmlessly over for a Camelsville goal kick. It's a bit of a let off that first corner. Camelsville. Play out short. Lopes drives into space, goes long. Looks for Musu, but cut out. Jagachena picks it up. There was a ball over the top there for Musu, but just miscued. But he'll take it into his stride off the deflection. And the ref is letting a lot go here today. He's done very well there, Kevin Delang, to keep that ball in play. However, misplaced pass. From Toledo, <laughs> gives possession back to Camerville in the form of a throw-in. Feely letting the ball run across his body, bounces, but finds a combination of Oscarson and Londono standing there. Musu with a cheeky roulette, surely that one is a foul, and the referee's still not given anything. Feely not giving him an inch out wide. And will come away with the throwing expertly ushered out of play. Brilliant touch from Tumbo. Lang chuck back inside. But was blocked from getting that cross in to the mixing pot. And from Spidley's pressure, Kelsville have yielded, yielded, yielded another throw in. Bird looking for Musa. Cut out. <laughs> they were nudging the back. From Londono, who plays quickly. Oscarson in behind. 
And the touch get away from it. Oh! It was definitely a coming together between Oskarsson and the defender. However, I think the referee's reasoning for not giving that penalty was that the ball was already out of reach for Oskarsson as it was going out for a goal kick off of his first touch. Keeper with a low driven kick, long. Jamie Bird, cushion touch into Diego Chano. And will now get tight to his man and force him back. Schmidley giving himself some room and trying to let him run out to play. And it is flagged by the official. See this replay. There is a clear trip by the number three. But the referee has let a lot go today already. So it is not exactly surprising that that wasn't given. However, he has just given a very soft free kick on Matumbo. It's very central, but nevertheless, with 75 seconds left in this first half, in front. However, this free kick could prove to be dangerous and could put a pin in those plans. Whipped in, it's gone all the way through to the back post. I think it's a corner off Jamie Bird. With 42 seconds left in the half. Shorty State will have an opportunity to whip this ball into the box. Three is the signal from DeGraw. He's screaming at his keeper to get back. That's, th th they've only got 24 seconds on the clock. This ball needs to come in. And it has come in. It's a Shorty State head that's got there first. Musu very well defended. Shoot, Sam! Oh, come on. There's 11 seconds on the clock. londono has gone for goal. Ah, oh, he had time to run up the pitch as well. <laughs> DeGraw was right to scream at his keeper to get back. Because he knew what could happen. And it was a good job that he did. Londona was on the counter-attack. Look for that long shot over the top of the keeper. But he managed to recover his positioning error in time. And that will mean that we go into the break. 2-1 to the Camelsville Tigers. We'll rejoin the action for the second half on the CU Sports Network. Jason, let's go see your room. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. 
The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's... It's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! smoking in thought, that's that. But here's the thing about lung cancer. By the time you see the symptoms, it could be too late. But now, there's a new scan that can detect lung cancer early when it's more curable. If you smoked, get scanned. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. About your friend but don't know how to reach out you could say how are you or get a fake tattoo you could ask with an app if it works for you you could chat with them in vr it's so good if you think you should check in yeah you should whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. reach out to a friend about their mental health whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. learn how you can help at seize the awkward.org when I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? 
love our money. She's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you. Get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you.
would tell my son, I love you every single day. Now, my dad has never said that to me, not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Jason, let's go see your room. Welcome back to the action here on the CU Sports Network. I've got a minute till the play commences. Hopefully, we'll see more of what we saw in that first half with the frantic action. It's very end to end as well. Both teams go back into their huddles to convey their final thoughts and their final messages before this second half starts. A big 45 minutes of football in terms of the scope of the seasons of both the Tigers and the Bears. And at the end of it, we will know who is the victor, or it could be a draw. You never know. It'll be Kevin DeLang to get us underway in this second half on the referee's whistle. Ball drills back in towards the feet of the yeah, of a river. The growl of a long ball dealt with by Lopes on the back foot. Kojima nods it down to Chano. Kicks that wide to Elvis, who looks to find Musu in behind, who's onside. Just nudged off the ball, and there, uh, now the referee will give a foul in a very dangerous position. Jamie Bird coming across as he looks to take this free kick very close to that Shawnee State 18 yard box, right on the corner, very lucky that Musu wasn't one step to his right inside that penalty area, otherwise, he would get the opportunity to convert from the spot instead. It's still an extremely dangerous position for this free kick. Jamie Bird could either whip this into the box or go for goal himself. Two hands raised, put down, floated towards the back stick. Oscarson headed just over, but was offside anyway. The growl with a lovely clip out wide. Cut back. Cowers will get bodies back. Switched out to this near side with Pontikis. Pontikis clips into the box. Headed clear by Feely. Oscarson picks it up on the break. 2v2. The covering Van der Poel there on the slide. Cuts out any chance of that counter-attack progressing any further. Oscarson skips round him this time, though. 
Lurks to play Musu in behind, just not quite on the same wavelength on that occasion. <laughs> Looks to be clipped out from the keeper to Pontikis, but majorly over here on that occasion. It's a good battle going on on that left side between Van der Poel and the captain Oscarson. Picked up again by Van der Poel. This time, the little nibbles at the hills of the number eight river by Londono was picked up by the referee and a foul has been given. Ball clipped in behind. Seeking out the Lang. But Joao Lopes was over in time to cover and let the ball run out for a Campbellsville throw in down in that fight far right hand corner it has got really cold up here now I do apologise if my teeth start chattering I'll try my best not to let that happen hopefully the fire action down on the pitch will heat me up enough as Feely looks to clip another long ball into Us Gustav Oscarson but it was cut out Drilled into the midfield, breaking both the attacking and the midfield line. Oh, but that's over the top of the ball there. As he catches Nathan Schmidley trying to get back behind the ball. But I think he's pulled it back for an earlier foul. On the bear. Singular of bears. Kicked out to the Greek fullback. He looks to beat his man, gets a cross in, stood up towards the back post, bravely headed by Jamie Bird. De Grau, looking for a ball in the box. Oskarsson just cushioning it away. As River goes for a long shot. Oh, it's found the back of the net. It's caught the keeper unawares. And from about 40 yards out, River has found the centre of that goal. And five minutes since the, the second half has got underway. Shawnee State are well and truly back in the game and are now on level terms. It's a stun to the Campbellsville system as they now need to try and regroup and find their groove once more. Feel it. Setting the ball back to Elvis. A little nibble from DeGrau. This time the ref plays a bit of advantage, sees that there's nothing on and brings it back for the foul. As we take another look at that remarkable goal, Philly just about to launch a ball into the box. Doesn't make it as far as the box. Picked up by Kojima. That goal seems to have injected a, another gear into this game as Neil Kazara 
with a lovely step over beating his man. And I think the referee will want a word of him for that. It was just a fast feat from the Tanzanian. The men, the free kick over in this left corner has been won. Jamie Bird, the in swinging free kick over on this left hand side. Two hands signaled again. Whipped into the box. Caught by the keeper, just a bit too close. Got up very well, the keeper. Was strong and held it with two hands. Quick roll out from him as well. Picked up by Schmidley. Returned all the way back to Haug. Lobs. Back to Haug. Feel you open up his body. And look to step. And take yards. Ball clipped in behind. Seeking the Tanzanian. But instead, cleared out by Ravarish. Just so far out, was no need to kick that away. Up in here, Kazawa with the throw-in. Looking to find on Dona. Uses his body well. Turns. Retains possession very well. It's got to be a foul, but it's not. It's Van Spindley! Golden edge chance for Campbellsville. Couldn't have had it more on a plate. It's travelled a long way, but reached his boot. He just needs to keep his head over the ball. But it's a miscue from the Swiss. And his sound over the bar from six yards out. <laughs> big chance there for Camelsville and a big let off for Shawnee State. Smithy arriving at that back post unmarked. Free as a bird, but could not convert. Very well recovered from Kojima there. Possession is lost once more. The growl with a gorgeous sidewinder to free up that left winger. A Travella flashed to Grace Fawcett across the face of goal. Set back to the Greek fullback. Kojima with a miscue. Looks into the box away from Feely. Decent distance on that headed clearance. Shawnee State with a bit of pressure here. Campbell's will poke back. With nine men behind the ball. It's gone for goal, deflected. Could have gone anywhere. Instead, it's out for a corner. Plays with such elegance, Thomas de Grau. And they'll now look to whip in another corner. Hopefully try and cause in some panic in that Camelsville box. It's played short to the edge of the box. Oh, it's a well-worked set piece. Out to River, who nearly had a second screamer of the game. Beautifully disguised. Wasn't picked up by the Camelsville defence. Again, left free. On the edge of that 18 yard box. Got a good connection on it, but just couldn't find the underside of that bar. Good chances for both teams. It's just a matter of who is going to find this third goal, if there is one. Feeling it with the interception.
Londono picks it up. Sprays it out to Spindley. With space in front of him to drive. Checks back. Looks to fire Londono, but instead gives away possession. And now Shawnee on a counter-attack. Kojima filling in at right back. Does well to stand up his man and come away with possession. This game has picked up a gear now. River. Out wide. Brilliant challenge from the Grau. Surely State, the more determined team in that exchange. Coming away with possession. Slipped in behind. Kojima covering once more in that right back slot. And Shayna headed away. Straight to the feet. <sighs> Teed up beautifully there. But just couldn't find the connection needed. Have a look back at this chance. Oh, it's, he's hit it too well. Almost. But he got a little more, a little more cow, a little more dip, a little more off it. And I could have seen it nestling in that corner. Beautifully worked from a good exchange there. Musu battling. It's very good battles all over the pitch. Very well matched teams. Both really won it today as well. And we will be treated to another half hour of football. The header from Jamie Bird flicked backwards. And that has allowed DeLang to pick up the ball. Driving at Feely. Sets it back. The ground. I'm pretty sure that was a shot. Heavily miscued. As it dragged along the floor. And Feely opts to clear it high. Just to allow Camusel to regroup and reset. Yet to see any. Ah, we have our first substitutions for Campbellsville getting stripped off. Looks to be the Italian Nico Lenari. Ah, no. Oh, they're in behind. James Feely covering well. Campbellsville has gone to sleep here. Oh, it's nearly sneaked to that near post after dragging it past the right back, Jamie Bird. He worked his, well, worked his way beautifully into a shooting opportunity. Looked to reverse it into the near post. But a flash just wide. And it's also Antonio Kinta entering the fray. Londono picks it up, bearing down on the fence. Couldn't quite thread the needle to find the fresh legs of Antonio Kinta. Find the ball on the ball. Sets it back to his Texan keeper. Oh, it's a missed kick. Austin picks it up, but couldn't use it to any sort of effect. River comes away with a ball, fizzes it out wide to the Malaysian left back. Rahman. Lobs well covered. Oskarsson again picks it up, plays it inside. Londono beats his man. That. Just determination to win it back has led Rondono to commit the foul after losing possession. His misplaced pass has resulted in a free kick for the dead ball specialist, Thomas de Grau. Q 
queuing up towards the back post. Sean Newstead will run. De Grau whips it very well up from that Camelsville defender there. Extinguishing any danger that there could have been. Just there to let that go. Looks to be another Camelsville change in the offing. But not until after this phase of play is done. So it's kicked out to De Grau again. Lobsch. Uh, Kojima it was. Finding Lenari for his first touch. But given away from the freshman Italian. It's gone over the top of Jamie Bird. It's kicked out to the Grau. Chano closing him down. Didn't let him get a full swing. So the power was taken off of it. It's good work from Chano to stop a full shot being taken. Lose for a big switch. Out to Neo Kazara. Looks for Nanari. Van der Poel cuts it out. However, the linesman has flag for offside. There's an argument to be had that Nanari didn't actually get involved in play there. However, Van der Poel could have had time to take it down and clear up the pitch rather than out if Lenari wasn't there. So I think we've, we've arrived at a correct decision. All right. Toledo. The growl. It's been flagged for offside. The green shell left back. If they look to play quickly, Oscarson's on here. Are they going to look to play quickly? There's two balls on the pitch, so they can't. It'll be Feely responsible for this free kick. Looking for Oscarson. Flicked onto Nanari. Van der Poel done well again to cut it out and wins his team. A throw in. De Lang. Toledo. Cut out by Lobsch. Delicately played. Clip line. The growl picked up again. A little reverse ball. Just too much on it. And the pole. The growl again with a little shoulder touch. She's really bringing out all the tricks. Campbellsville substitution. Lenari being brought off already. Must have been given some instructions that wasn't fulfilled to coach Adam Preston's liking. And Ladona also making way. And that'll be Ramos and Stenlin on the pitch for Campbellsville. Can they be the difference in this last 25 minutes to get it to victory to Campbellsville? Stenlin working hard already. Lays it off to Kinta. Kinta whips. Ooh. It's an interesting, made a, I mean, make an interesting noise there. The keeper was scampering across his goal. Kinta seemed very interested. But it just was the wrong side of the post for Antonio Kinta. Chano with another header wide. He's won so many in there tonight. Yeah. 
brilliantly covered from Kojima again down in that right back space. Not given an uh, inch of space to that Shawnee State player down there. Oh, it's broke to a Shawnee State player there. And a throwing, a throwing, a corner. It's come out of nothing, really. And I've alluded to it before with the growl on the set pieces. It's always a danger. The growl conducting traffic. Ball towards the back post! And it's turned in by Nikos Pontikis, who celebrates down with the fans, the Shawnee State women's team down there. And he likes it a lot. Shawnee State had their third. It was the set piece out of nothing. Camels were switched off momentarily. And Pontikis found his way to the back stick. The right back has his name on the score sheet. And it's 3 2 away from home to the Shirley State Bears. with a line breaking pass finds the Peter Ramos Stenlin can't quite get it under Kojima breaking forward the acceleration on display from the Japanese midfielder but the situation was diffused by the Shawnee State defence as they now clip the ball forward and a wonderful touch from Toledo Feely on the cover but Toledo's bitten him as well Ah, if he got his head up, there was a man back post. Oh, it's nearly a home goal. But it was well cut out by Jamie Bird. He's done well not to turn that into his own net. And Hauger can recover another scare for Campbellsville. Kojima using his body well. Played out to Bird. It looks played down the line, but it's cut off by Toledo. Uh, oh, I've got, I've got Camarago and Toledo mixed up. Camarago is playing on this near right hand side. I do apologise. Jamie Bird looking for options at this throw in. <laughs> Ramos leaps and ball. Nothing doing in terms of the referee's whistle. Slipped in behind. It's a think the Lang. And Lobs does very well to prevent the corner. Showing his speed there to stop the growl getting his right foot on another corner. on the state, content to take their time. Play one, two touch football. The growl with another switch. Out to that right hand side. Ball whipped in. Lopes does well. It's eventually cleared by Chano. Montikas beats his man. Oscarson skinned. Ball stood up. Bird can't deal with it, but it's reached this way. Out to the edge of the box for a Campbellsville throwing down in that corner. Again, another dangerous situation. 
the Camels all want to get themselves back into the game. Yes, they need to attack with menace and vengeance. But they cannot switch off defensively and leave holes in that back line. Some Shawnee State substitutions. Anderson and Zin, Elvis and Zindu come into the game, as well as I think Matt Stam. Surely a high foot there by the Shawnee State defender, but again. As he has done on many occasions this evening, the referee letting it go. <laughs> Find the pole. Stenlam went in the free kick. But again, nothing doing. It's the referee signal for a camel to throw in. Have 18 minutes on the clock. You would think Camelsville are going to have a roll of the dice sooner rather than later. Feely. Looking for Stenland. Cut out by Pontikis. Chena, stuck in Camavago in his tracks. Camavago again. Couldn't get a better feeling on that occasion. But Lopes haven't cleared properly. It's resulted in a Camels goal goal kick. <laughs> Played short to Lopes. Kojima with three around him. Drops it off into Feely. Feely with not a lot to aim at. He's clipped it straight into Pontikis. Recovered by Chano. Back to Hay. Lovely clip into the path of Jamie Bird, but a loose touch. The ball's just escaped him. And there's Undu on the ball, on the ball, battling. Comes all throwing. Jamie Bird to take. Stops to work the line. Stenland, a good flick on, but picked up by DeGrau again, and it's kicked all the way back to Tom, Tom Linson. Recovered by Kinta, has hooked it towards the path for the Icelandic Oskarsson. And it'll be for Campbellsville, throw in, Chano taking quickly, Pontique is cut out very well. I think that was a dive, and the referee was not allowing himself to be conned. And this will allow Elvis Nyakwizaria. I apologise, mate. Elvis with the ball into the box. An acrobatic clearance by Van der Poel. Kojima recovering possession. Back to Lopsch. All the way back to Havin. Who's had a miscue. And it's dropped into Kamago. Return back to Kamago, but Feely will get there. And just knock it out for a throw in. Content with getting a danger away. We've got 15 minutes left in this game. As Shawnee State make another of their substitutions. And I think that's the Langren entering the fray. 
And it is. That's Toledo in no rush to get off the pitch. Sean is there on the right to take their time. They have started the game and they, there is 12 players on the pitch with Toledo still coming off the pitch. Oskarsson's picks up the ball though. And this, like a magnet to the growl. He's had a brilliant pick out towards that far post, Rahman. Oh, if he could have shifted that onto his left foot, he'd had a chance. Camelsville can break here. Ramos in behind. However, Shawnee State have got bodies back in numbers. Determination on display from the Bears. Oskarsson, lovely stop and go. Kicked out to Kinter. Bird in support. Off to try and put it on his own accord. Bird stretch, not reached it. Chano with a foul that stops a promising Shawnee State counter attack. The fans are not happy with that one. He's booked. Someone who's in no real direction. The ref just put a card up in the air. Doesn't really help us out up here. But he's booked Chano for the challenge. And it looks to be a quadruple substitution in the offing for Gamblersville. We said that there was needed to be a roll of the dice executed, and Adam Preston is going to do that in the form of four substitutions. Oskarsson makes claim to the long ball. Pontikas can't get past Elvis. Keep down to Camavago. And Oskarsson clears. This stop-start play is favouring Shawnee State in the moment as they watch the time drain away. And it will be four substitutions at the same time. Musu, Londono. Harrison Freeman. And also Nathan Schmidley. Can one of those four players be the difference that prevents a home defeat for Canwasville on this cold October evening? Pontikas hooks one into the box. Floating back stick. Jamie Bird with a good flick on to prevent the player getting in at the back post there. Although he's given away a corner, it could have he could have prevented a lot more. The growl, slowly making his way across to take a corner. I was gonna say, just dropping it in place for him, not allowing any time wasting. Another great ball into the growl. It's not picked up at the back post again. And Van der Poel had a chance, it's still fallen. The ground whipped it again. Wow, it's a big let off for Camelsville once more. Van der Poel found himself with a free header at that back post. No one was picking him up. And yet again, Camelsville get away with it. <laughs> Pontikis, after finding that goal, nothing can seem to beat him. Bird hooks it away. Londono into Musu. Kinter back post. Musu just gets the ball trapped under his feet and allows Shawnee State to regroup. Surely that's a foul out wide. Elvis with a man up him. Delivers. Inviting cross. Cleared away. Recovered by Kojima. Schmidley. Bird. Blocked. Lopsch 
into the feet of Londono. Done very well to retain possession. Squares up his man. Ah, oh, it's filthy from Londono. Skills around his man. Can he get a cross off? Extremely well worked from Samuel Londono. The quick feet bamboozled the central midfielder there. Jamie Bird trying to cause havoc in that Bears box. With a launching throw to no avail. He will get a second bite of the cherry though. Drop to Musu. Brilliant block from Pontikis. Well, Elvis long, launched one as well. In towards Schmidley, hands all over him. Londono brings it down. And it's gone out for a throw in. Just rolled up that corner flag, but it is a throw in. Elvis looking for options. Moves it with a flick on. Drop back out to the Tanzanian. It's cleared. Felia hooked back in a general direction. And Bird will recover possession. It's a speculative effort from Jamie Bird. The keeper will just. Wait until he's required to pick that ball up. Just to let that clock tick down ever closer. 2 0. Eight minutes and 44 seconds on the clock for Campbellsville to find a leveller. Or maybe for Shawnee State to pull two clear. Brilliant touch from Londono. Moves to it back to goal. Find space. Kojima. Left footed clip. Schmidley is chasing. And Rahman clears away. Freeman beat this man. Clip it down the line. But Schmidley was the wrong side of his player. Very well up from Lobsch. Feely has to act lively here. He does. However, it's picked off, as have most long balls, by this Shawnee State defence. Jamie Bird with a lunge there. Just giving away a free kick, allowing Shawnee State to relieve some of that pressure and get up the pitch to growl. It's a lovely ball out wide, just not quick enough to get there. Was Kama Camargo. Kajima using his body well. And gives it away. Foul has been given. This allows Council to get out the pitch. The referee indicating that was clearly not 10 yards away from the ball from Camargo there. Feely will look to hook this ball into an area, maybe a nod down for someone to get on the end of. Hooked high into Schmidley. Cut off by Ravarish again. Harry Freeman tackling Rahman over that far side. But it's getting frustrating now. It's getting now biting for Cowersville. Freeman again wins the header. Schmidley picks it up. Kinter on a half turn. Big 50-50 there. But Grau comes away in possession, but immediately relinquished. How? Clipped into Kinter. Pontigas misjudged. There's an overload on this left side. Kinter's found Musu. Musu backed into. Ah! Oh, couldn't even find my words. Kinta. It's like ping ball in there. It's found Sebastiano Musu. 
He's hit it! He's hit it clean, but straight into the grasp of Tomlinson. He's done well to watch it all the way onto his left peg. Caught it sweetly. But the Shawnee State keeper has just put it into his midriff. Londono battling well. And possession recovered by Kojima. Too strong for DeLang there as Kojima wins the free kick. This allows Cowansville to get up the pitch. Trial up, looking to play quickly. Pontikas intercepts. He can stride away. Brilliant tackle from Neo Kozara. He's off the pitch. Play on. Ah, the ref stopped the clock anyway. Four minutes and 52 seconds. Remain. The Grau interacting with some of the fans here. Must have been giving him some stick. And Feely's just going to let that guy out for a council goal kick. Nathan Spindley coming off for Guillermo Ferrero. Another striker coming onto the pitch. This is Campbellsville's last roll of the dice. Feely. Travelling. Plays long. Picked up by Elvis. Londono. Shifts into the box. Could have gone down. Could have gone down again. Referee is a penalty. He's given a free kick, but I think it's inside the box. Oh. Must have been right on the line. This is still a very, very dangerous predicament. Londono is saying it's inside the box. But the referee doesn't want anything to do with it. They like Guillermo Ferrero over here in the stadium. This is a very dangerous situation. The Shawnee State do not want to be dealing with. With three minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock. Will it be Bird or will it be Musu? It's Musu. Deflected and blocked. Londono rises and claimed by Tomlinson. A big moment in the game. Tomlinson ushering his players up the pitch and he will go long. And he'll find Ponte gets his feet with a gorgeous touch and Camargo. Has been forced backward by Harry Freeman. And that is a Campbellsville throw in, but the ref, the linesman didn't get it. The ref has. Musu, we're back to goal. Can he win something? His oh, Van der Poel is all over him. That will undoubtedly require a yellow card to be brandished. As the referee stops the clock with three minutes left. Oh, oh it's close. He's had a nibble, but it is just on the edge. And the referee has made the right decision. I thought the first contact did come inside the box and therefore it would have been a penalty. But Van der Poel's lunge was just outside. Another promising situation for the Tigers here though. With Jamie Bird on his far left side. Can he find the set piece delivery? That will turn into a goal in this late stage. Let's put the two hands up for the signal. Two hands are still up. Just taking the time to bounce the ball. Signaling. What is he going to do? Where is he going to put it? Who could be a hero in white tonight? Bird clips into the box. It's inviting. It's in! Harry Freeman! Harry Freeman on the score sheet! He's done it, Leon! Harry Freeman coming back from injury to rise tallest with 
have two minutes left on the clock and head home his first goal for Campbellsville. Yeah. Elation throughout the stadium. And Campbellsville are prepared. They want to go again for a winner. They have shocked Geordie State. They're back in the game late on here at Finley Stadium. And it is erupting down below me. We could be in for a stunning two minutes and 42 seconds here under the lights at Finley Stadium. Kinta, looking, Musu's on for the switch. And it's Musu in behind. Can Pontigas get back? Musu's lost his footing. Pontigas does very well. And it's a Campbellsville corner late on. Taken quickly to Elvis. Hooks with his right foot in towards the box. Keepers come and make claim. Both teams wanting to win here. Ah, it's a soft foul given by the referee. And it's needless from the keeper. Squaring up to Londono. He's going to be booked for his troubles. Oh, will he? Nah, the ref's just pushing him backwards. <laughs> These last two minutes will be a treat. It's been such a pleasure to commentate on this game. My first men's game to commentate on. And we've had a six goal thriller. Tom Nissen, launching it forward. Oh, it's broken to Delang. Brilliantly ushered out by Jamie Bird. Kristen Haug bounces. Goes long. It's a skewed miss kick. But it's worked. It's found Antonio Quinta. And Kojima hook long. Will Londono capitalise? It's a race between Londono and Tomlinson. Tomlinson clears well. But they're playing quickly. The keeper's out of his goal. Londono, can he turn? Can he shoot? He shoots wide. And Tomlinson playing quickly as well. Looking for Ponticus. He's not looking. But he's done very well. The first time right footed pass. The growl. A misplaced pass. Breaking. It's whipped in. It's dangerous. It's in. Shorty stay with it late on. It's Kevin DeLang and it's heartbreak for Campbellsville. The five foot five senior rises tallest to put the ball home with 61 seconds left. Could that be all she wrote? Or is there one more twist in the tail? Delang beats the six foot two Feely to the ball in the air once more. Lopsh does well, comes away with possession. The growl fouls him. 40 seconds. Feely plays out to Bird. Bird with space to drive. Delivers. It makes the box. The keepers come. It's frantic in the box. It's gone for a corner. They've got to go quickly. There's 18 seconds left. Ref, it's clearly a corner. Nine, eight, seven, it's an awful, eight, awful decision three, from the man in yellow. 
and Shawnee State will come away from the fortress that is Finley Stadium with a victory. Wow, what a game. What a game of football. And it spilled over. The Shawnee State players are celebrating in front of the fans, running up to the faces of the fans and the players, and it's all kicking off down below me. Passion at its highest. Jubilation for Shawnee State and heartbreak for Camelsville. The next game for Camelsville will be away on Wednesday at the University of Pikeville where they look to put today's heartbreak behind them. We look at the goals. A beautiful save from Haug, but it drops and it's slotted home. This was the Campbellsville leveller through Nathan Schmidley from his second in two games. This one falls to Londono who slots it home into that bottom right corner. Campbellsville, 2-1 up. But then the reply came from a long shot from River. 2-2. Two, two. Ball swung into the box from the Grau. Met back post by, by Pontikis. And he wheels away in celebration. He loves it. 3-2. With two minutes left, Campbellsville thought they snatched a point. Harry Freeman rising highest for the backward flicking header. Such jubilation. But that turned to heartbreak just a mere 60 seconds later when DeLang rose highest and slide it past Christian Haug. And that's how we ended up. 4-3 to Bears. It's been, it's all settled down on the pitch now. It's an amazing game of football. It's a privilege to be here. But thank you so much for joining us here on the CU Sports Network. Until next time, goodbye.